center. Waiting for the snap. He's got it. Yes! Touchdown, Auburn! Awesome, baby! Awesome! Green. Handoff. Amazing. I can't believe it. Got to get him lined up. Get down. I don't believe the call. Three seconds. Two. One. Over. Inexplicable. Gibson wide right. Blitz. Green in the end zone. Up for grabs. It's caught. Touchdown, Georgia. Oh, my goodness. Michael Johnson. SEC on CBS. There is no more splendid setting in all of college football than the lovely city of Athens, Georgia on game day. When the Bulldogs make the Bulldog walk, men like David Pollock with war we take care and of And the defending SEC champions are at home in Sanford Stadium today, they welcome the Auburn Tigers who roll into town six and four, the Georgia Bulldogs seven wins and two defeats. And here comes Georgia. I'm Bert Lundquist along with Todd Blackledge and Jill Arrington. When these two ancient rivals collide in their annual late season get together, there is usually something of significance at stake, and that is the case again today. Not for Auburn, however. They have stumbled to four losses and have been reduced to the role of spoiler. However, that is a role at which they usually excel. Much on the plate remains for Georgia, however. The current SEC Eastern Division standings reflect Florida's narrow victory over South Carolina just a moment ago. So Georgia needs this victory today. Tennessee is also winning big this afternoon. Todd, I'm really curious about the respective frames of mind of these two teams. Well, they come in with a totally different perspective. For Auburn, they've had to reset new goals in the month of November. You mentioned the spoiler role, but they also want to improve their bowl standings and prove that they're a better team than their record shows. Georgia, it's still all out there to defend their SEC championship, but the difference between this team this year and last year, last year at this time, they were cruising. They were upward ascending. Right now, from the very beginning, it's kind of been a struggle. It feels like they're just grinding it out and hanging on to the end. Not that it's more significant than any game, but third downs really will be vital to that. I think it's going to be a huge factor, and last week when Ole Miss beat Auburn. That was the difference. Ole Miss was 10 of 18 on third down. Auburn was 3 of 13. And they are having a real struggle when they get to seven yards or more that they need to convert. But a big key today could be the running of quarterback Jason Campbell. Now, he's throwing the ball pretty well, but he really showed last week his effectiveness as a runner. Last week, he had 42 yards rushing. Last year, against these Georgia Bulldogs, he had 72 yards rushing. So I think a key for Auburn today against this very good Georgia defense is not for Jason Campbell to not be afraid to run the football on third down. The other key is big plays, and that leads me to Fred Gibson of Georgia, the wide receiver. Now, Fred has had a tough year because of injuries. He's really only played in four games, but he is healthier now than he has been since the beginning of the year against Clemson. And when Fred Gibson is healthy, he is a guy for Georgia that can make the big plays, either tracking down a long throw from David Green or taking a short pass and making something happen after the catch. Big plays and third down critical today. And what a glorious day we have been given today. 64 degrees, 25% humidity, partly cloudy the forecast and a slight breeze out of the south. Well, separated by just over 
175 miles. This the 107th meeting. And look at the third item down. Auburn has outscored Georgia by two points. Two points in the previous 106 games. Georgia won the toss. They have deferred until the second half. Auburn will get the football to open the game. Billy Bennett will kick off. Senior place kicker from Athens, who is now the all-time single-season scoring record for the Bulldogs. Carnell Williams and Ben Aroma Shadu are the two men deep for the Tigers of Auburn. Georgia 13 and 1 a year ago, 7 and 2 as we enter this one. And it bounces picked up by Carnell Williams across the 20. Still alive and knocked down as he gets out near the 30 and a flag is thrown. And we go down to Jill Arrington. Jill? Well, you guys talked about at the beginning of the game at 6 and 4, Auburn had to reset their goals. Today they're playing for pride. These next two games against Georgia, against Alabama, if they win those, they finish their season on a strong note. Now, quarterback Jason Campbell talked to his good friend Fred Gibson this week. He said, man, we are coming ready. We want revenge on last season, and we're going to play the spoiler. We're going to spoil Georgia's season, and Vern, that's the way it's been the past couple of years. Yes, it has, Jill. There was no flag. It'll be first down. At the 29-yard line, Jason Campbell has Carnell Cadillac Williams in the backfield. And it looks like they're audibling on the very first play of the game. They're trying to spread the defense out by formation, and an audible right away for Jason. There's Campbell back to throw. Finds Jarris McIntyre on the first down play to the 34-yard line. That's a game of five. Campbell, the junior, from Taylorsville, Mississippi. Throws for a high percentage, doesn't throw a lot. And look at the interceptions for the season. Leads the SEC over four. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is, they don't throw for a lot of yardage, but he's been very efficient. And right now, he's the fourth most efficient quarterback in the SEC. So within their system, he has done a lot of good things at the quarterback position. On second and five, the fullback joins the fray. Brandon Johnson, he'll lead Cadillac Williams through. There's the first contact and the second by Thomas Davis. <laughs> now, Cadillac is going to break a lot of tackles and make people miss. But one guy that probably will not miss many tackles is Thomas Davis. I mean, this guy leads the team with 92 tackles. And the, one of the strengths of this Georgia defense has been how good the tackling is from the two safeties, Thomas Davis and Sean Jones. Now, Jones out of the game today, and a lot more pressure on this guy, Thomas Davis. Only three points on game opening drives this season third and three here's the first of the third down plays it's third and short yeah. third and one to six Auburn is about 50 percent effective Campbell back with protection nope it breaks down he tries to run knocked down short of the first down Odell Thurman with the initial hit and David Pollock came in to complete the play see the only thing is he tried too late now David Pollock is going to be the guy that gets there and Jason Campbell's looking looking and at he tried to run, but it was a little bit too late. And again, the quickness of the game and the quickness of David Pollock, he's got to adjust to that. Damian Gary back to return the punt of the freshman Cody Bliss, number 30. Nice and high, fairly short. Gary comes up and signals for a catch, grabs it at the 33-yard line. That is a 32-yard punt, nothing on the return. Mark Britt, third-year head coach. Last season, 13 and one, the SEC champions. Losses twice this season on the road at LSU by seven in Jacksonville two weeks ago by three. And David Green, 59% for his career, 46 touchdowns, 25 interceptions. That ratio. A little closer yeah. this season. Yeah, first time in his career he's had more interceptions than touchdowns at this point in the year. Seven touchdowns, eight interceptions, and a, a false start, bad start for Georgia right away. Referee is Terry Brown. Brought to the snap. 
False start against the offense. Movement within the offensive line. Phil is five yards. Still first down. Well, through nine games this season, David Green, 61%. But there's the uh, touchdown interception difference, seven and eight. And there's a lot of factors for that. It's not just David Green having an off year. They reverse on first down. Here comes Reggie Brown. He's got Max Gene Gillis in front. And that is a lot to have in yeah. front. And that's a good first call by Mark Rick. I mean, this Auburn defense can really run. They're aggressive in their front seven, and the way to offset a fast and aggressive attacking defense is to run reverse. Get that defense all going this way and bring the reverse back this way. Good fake to Michael Cooper. You freeze the linebackers. You get a couple linemen out in front of the play, and a nice misdirection play to start the game for the Bulldogs. Spencer Johnson and Kevin Hobbs combined for the tackle, but a gain of 17 gets them out of a preliminary hole. Now Cooper and Thomas in the backfield, and Green will go from the spread. Safety blitz is threatened. And off Michael Cooper goes right, picks up nothing. Now let's check the Earthlink starting lineups. You have met David Green. And uh, this is uh, today a patchwork offensive line. Nick Jones at center gets his first start. Bartley Miller, the normal right guard, is out perhaps for the season. Russ Tanner moves over from center to right guard. Michael Cooper, Jeremy Thomas in the backfield. Fred Gibson told us yesterday that he is 100%. And if so, it's the first time since the Clemson game. A lot of folks at the line of scrimmage. David Green checking off. Long count. Handed off on the draw play, and there's not much there. Out to the 49-yard line. Let's check this Tiger defense of Auburn. They come in 6-4. and four. And up front, it's Ratliff who gets the start today. DeMarco McNeil, Spencer Johnson, and Reggie Torbor, who is a pass-rushing specialist. Good trio of linebackers, Williams, Thomas, and Dansby. And the secondary, Kevin Hobbs and Will Herring, along with Junior Rose Green and Carlos Rogers. Third and seven. Gibson and Brown. Yeah, they had both to burn wide yep. yeah the, the wide receivers both started out on the wrong side, and David Green had to try to get them flipped over and then had to use the timeout. 11 exactly remaining opening quarter. The day is gorgeous, no other way to describe it. And we've got a pretty decent football game underway here, Auburn and Georgia. From Sanford Stadium on the campus of the University of Georgia, ball in the 49. Third and seven, Michael Cooper. Here comes Green rolling out to his left, fires it into traffic, complete. Caught by Fred Gibson. Yeah. Nice start for Gibson. That's a nice start for everybody because not only do you get Fred involved in the game, he makes the catch after three drops against Florida two weeks ago. So he makes his first catch and you get the first down. David Green coming into the game, completing 73% of his passes on third down, and he gets his first one on this game to Fred Gibson. And Gibson, who has missed three complete games, but in two others, he's played only one play. First down and 10. Here comes the blitz. Will Harris. Wow, what he's picked play. up. Man coverage. Deep toward the end zone. It's incomplete. Intended for Brian McLennan, and Carlos Rogers was defending. Did they get oh Herring coming gosh. in? Michael Cooper <laughs> just stoned him. And, and this has been one of the problems for Georgia with these young backs. But watch him block the safety. I mean, just stops 35 dead in his tracks. Michael Cooper gives up the fake, picks up the blitz, and that gives David Green a nice pocket to throw out of. One of the problems that they've had in protecting the quarterback this year, it hasn't just been new offensive linemen. It's been young running backs that don't always know who to block or how to block them. Michael Cooper did that time. David Green has been sacked 29 times this year. That's tied for most in the SEC. Here's Cooper on uh, second down, gets five, runs into Carlos Dansby, number 11. A lot of times with young running backs, they've got to know two things. First, they've got to know who to block, okay? So if the protection is this, who is my guy? Who am I responsible for? And then it's how to block, what kind of technique to use. A lot of times they know the first part, they know who to block, but they don't use a good technique and they still give up a sack. So take a look at Georgia tied with Mississippi State coming into today with 29 sacks on their veteran quarterback, David Green. Craig Lumpkin 
true freshman is now in the backfield. Here's David Green on third down and five. Screen pass right side. Lumpkin has it, and he barrels across the 30, and Georgia converts another third down in this drive. And Tommy Tuberville told us this week the one thing they really would have to adjust to in this game was Georgia's screens and draws. That's what they do so well. The rush is there. Torbor near a sack. But good execution. And watch Lumpkin accelerate. Once he caught the ball, he accelerated straight north and south to pick up the first down. First down and 10. This the eighth play of the drive. And again, last week, Ole Miss 10 of 18 on third down against this Auburn defense. Lumpkin on the sweep with Thomas, but nothing doing as Dexter Murphy, number 91, breaks through. Mm. Big game. Big game. Big win Repeat for the first Florida Gators. <laughs> they and play well on the road, don't they? It's uh, it's something. And that, of course, very significant for this Georgia Bulldog team because if it should, were it to come down to a head-to-head, -head, a two-team finish in the East, Florida would have the tiebreaker right. against Georgia. Tennessee has the tiebreaker over Florida. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> it's going to be an interesting thing to watch here down the stretch. After the penalty, First and 20 back at the 38 yard line. Holding call on uh, the Georgia Bulldogs. Now Gibson comes near side. Along with Damian Gary and Craig Lumpkin remains the running back. Reggie Brown split off to the right. Auburn with four down. Lumpkin around the right side. Scoots down inside the 30. Kevin Hobbs makes the tackle. But a gain of nine. Well, Todd, you alluded to this, how many uh, wide receivers and running backs they've had missed games this year. Yeah, I mean, Damian Gary, the only wide receiver that's played in all nine games, so they've had injuries there. They've had all new offensive linemen. They've had young running backs that have been in and out of the lineup. And so from the very beginning, it's almost like David Green has not been playing with a full complement around him offensively and uh, he also has not played or thrown the ball as consistently as he did a year ago second and 11 they go from the eye it's Lumpkin uh, back to the line of scrimmage and that's about it I think if there was any question about the mindset of the Auburn team particularly defense uh, I think they've shown right now that they're here to play and uh, I don't think we question that knowing just uh, the character of this Auburn football team how solid their defense has been even though they've got a six and four record this is a defense that is seventh in the country in total defense and also points allowed. So uh, a lot of pride among this Auburn defensive football team. This is the third third down in this drive. Third and 11. Auburn showing blitz. A lot of time when they show this, they like to drop out. And that is what they do now. They bring four. Here's Green with a lot of time. Brown is open. And the catch is made. It'll be first and goal at the nine-yard line. Reggie Brown, 21 yards. Well, it starts with protection, and David Green got it. Auburn only rushed four. It's a cover two defense. That means there's a corner underneath and a safety coming over the top, and there's a hole right in between there, and David Green put the ball right in the perfect spot for Reggie Brown. Nice little tap dance on the sideline for Reggie Brown. Now, here is where they have had problems. They've, they've gotten the field goal production. But they've not scored touchdowns. But they need to score touchdowns today to beat this Auburn team, I think. And off right side to Michael Cooper, number five. You know, we asked Mark Richt about that. What, you know, what's been the problem in the red zone? And he says, you know, he thinks it's just a reflection of their whole offense all year, that they've been inconsistent everywhere. They've looked good at times. They've moved the ball well at times, and then they haven't looked good. And, and what they've done in the red zone has just kind of been a carryover of that. I mean, they, they score. 82% of the time, but they just don't get many touchdowns this season. Loss of two, second down and goal, and a three wide receiver set now for Georgia. Cover two look for Auburn. That might open up the middle of the field. Design quarterback running play, and Green <laughs> knocked out of bounds. He doesn't look quite as elusive as some we've seen. There's a flag down. Well, you're right. That was a design quarterback keep. Kind of a quarterback sweep to the short side of the field. Maybe a little bit more effective with uh, DJ Shockley when he's healthy than with David Green. David Shockley, the backup quarterback among those out for the year. And here's Terry Brown once again. 
holding. You see, this is this is part of the problem. You know, they moved the football. They've converted three of three on third downs. They get in the red zone, and now they go backwards. Second holding call on this drive. They also had uh, a motion penalty. Second and goal from just outside the 20. Yeah. And so, I mean, now they're in a very difficult situation in terms of scoring touchdowns because it's second and 20 from the 20, and they've got to get it all the way to the end zone. Three wide receivers again. Gibson is the widest of the three, bottom of the screen. That's Damian Gary in the slot. And again, Auburn appears to, oh, my goodness. Get back, get back. They did. See, normally Georgia would try to draw the offsides, but there's a new center, and they're in the shotgun. And there's a bad snap. And it goes straight up in the air. I believe David Green recaptured the football, but uh, Carlos Dansby and Reggie Torber had a meeting in his middle. And remember, this is a new center for Georgia, and he's a true freshman. Nick Jones is a very talented, aggressive, competitive guy, but he's got a lot on his mind right now. So first, he doesn't snap it, and they don't get the offsides penalty. But it's a little harder in the shotgun. And then David Green's changing the protections, and then he's going to get a bad snap. And, and you can just imagine how much is running through the head of that true freshman center right now, Nick Jones. Good job by David Green just to keep his eye on the football and not giving up the play. Nick Jones, a freshman, 6'3", 272 from Bowdoin, Georgia. Getting his first start today, Russ Tanner, who has been the starter most of the year, had to move over to right guard because Bartley Miller is injured. So he's in there. I mean, he's thinking, okay, what's the snap on? Who am I supposed to block? How are we protecting this? And then I've got to make a good shotgun snap. There's a lot to think about when he's in these passing situations. Now, this time, Georgia will load up on the left side, all three of the wideouts. Now, Michael Johnson, hero of last year's game, goes in motion to the right side. And here's Green dancing outside and can't. And that sack may have taken him out of field goal range. DeMarco McNeil, one of the senior leaders on this Auburn defense. Now, I don't really put this sack on the Georgia offensive line as much as I put it on David Green holding on to the ball and, and, and hanging on trying to make a play deep down the field. Now, Billy Bennett is on. All-time leading scorer. He has a chance to tie Kevin Butler. If this one is good, he will kick it from 47 yards away. Whoa, got it. Shaved the left upright. Good by a whisker or two. And Billy Bennett, a native of Athens, goes into the record book alongside Kevin Butler. Tuberville reacts. Bennett exudes 3 0 Georgia. 5.23 remaining opening quarter. This season, when Auburn has scored first, they are 6 and 0. You could figure it out. No. But they haven't. 0 <laughs> and 4. And ironically, the last time that Auburn scored first in the game and lost was when they lost to Georgia last year in Auburn, 24 21. Billy Bennett getting ready to kick off for the second time. After that 47-yard field goal, Bennett comes near side, and this will be Aroma Shadu, number one, with the return. Being chased by Bruce Thornton, and nice, yep. nice work. Tim Duckworth applauds on that uh, Auburn bench, a 31-yard return for Aroma Shadu. And the offensive line for Auburn, Para, Reddick, Lindsey, Crittenden, and McNeil. Two sophomores in the front five. Carnell Williams, Brandon Johnson in the backfield. Obamanu, Jarris McIntyre, the wideouts. And the tight end is Cooper Wallace. First down and 10 at the 37-yard line. And Cadillac Williams in the backfield. Five 100-yard-plus games this season. Play fake, Jason Campbell. Got a lot of time. Here comes a late rush by Thurman, and the pass is complete up at the 48-yard line. Jarris McIntyre makes the grab defensively for Georgia, and uh, they have excelled again this year. Up front gathers Gerald Anderson, Ken Beal, the All-American David Pollock, linebackers. 
Arnold Harrison, Odell Thurman, and Tony Taylor. And in the secondary, Thornton Davis, Greg Blue gets a start for the injured Sean Jones today and Tim Jennings at the corner. And they really got David Pollock on that bootleg. He really bit on the play fake, and that's how Campbell got outside. There's Williams on first down, runs into the middle linebacker Odell Thurman. But he does cross into Georgia country. Well, these two teams met for the first time in 1892. This is the 107th meeting. That first game, by the way, Auburn won at 10 nothing. Now, this is up to date. This is amazing to me. 1,589 points to 1,588. First game was 10 nothing. They played again two years later. And Georgia won that one 10 to 8. On second down, Campbell with the play action. Deep right side. Obamani got separation and it was just out of his reach. Tim Jennings defending. He had a couple of options. He had his tight end, Cooper Wallace, working on Arnold Harrison, and he had him beat on the left side of the field. Obamanu with the step on his man. Auburn uh, showing a desire to stretch the field and make this Georgia defense play on us. Pretty good idea by Hugh Nall, the offensive coordinator, because you know what you've got with Carnell Williams, but they're trying to set up their running game by throwing the football a little bit early. Now you saw the figures for Obamanu last week, and of course, the most memorable play in the game was a catch he was unable to make, dropped in the end zone for what would have been an Auburn victory. On third down, here's Campbell. Little screen side, McIntyre buried by Thurman, the middle linebacker. I think they were ready for that screen. <laughs> and again, third and seven or more is where Auburn has struggled this year on offense. Third and seven or more, only 20% conversion rate. And that time, Georgia right there waiting for it. Odell Thurman, your middle linebacker, knew exactly where the ball was going and was there for the huge hit on McIntyre. That's going to bring on Cody Bliss for the second time. Damian Gary, the all-time punt return leader in Georgia Bulldog history, back and again it's high. And for the second time, a fair catch taken by Damian Gary. That's a 35-yard punt, but significantly nothing on the return. And a late flag is thrown. Well, there was a little extra pushing and shoving between Demario Minter of Georgia, and I'm not sure who he was entangled with on the Auburn side. Might have been Lamel Ages. Okay. During the kick, incidental face mask against the kicking team. The penalty will be penalized post scrimmage kick enforcement. Five yard penalties from the end of the run. First down. Now that was not one for the ages. No. Oh, good. <laughs> it could have been a lot worse. You know, That's it could have been unsportsmanlike or a personal foul as it is just a five yard penalty on ages. And Tommy Tuberville not too uh, not too thrilled with all of that. And we're still chatting out at the uh, 24 yard line. Are you sure? All right. Well, we'll allow them to continue their conversation. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Auburn, Georgia, the Deep South's oldest rivalry began in 1892. Legendary coach John Heisman went 2-1-1 one one versus Georgia. Three games were postponed during the war eras, and Auburn upset Georgia in 1942, but the Dogs still captured the national title. All right, Jill, Sanford Stadium. Construction began in 1929. It now seats 92,000. And uh, the road field advantage, kind of unusual. Auburn leads games played here 17 to 8. Georgia leads games played in Auburn. And they are still trying to figure out what's going on here. They certainly are. Now they're walking. It does not apply. The penalty is 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Now there's an exasperated Tommy Tupperville who wants a further explanation. Well, I was being facetious when I said as we went to the commercial break they were going to continue talking about it. And see, Tommy doesn't want to talk to this guy. 
He says, I don't want to talk to a guy with a black hat. I want to talk to the guy with the white hat. He says, I appreciate the job you're doing, but I want to talk to the guy with the white hat. Bring him over. Now he's over. It's Terry Brown, the referee. Trying to sort it out for Tommy Tuberville. Now these referees, if they know the boss is here, they want to make sure they've got their T's crossed and their I's dotted on everything. Well, this is uh, not compelling drama no. at this point. I don't know that Tommy Tuberville is satisfied with the explanation, but he did get one. And good field position now for Georgia. What started out looking like they might be inside their own 20, they're now out past their 30. So good starting field position for David Green. And Craig Lumpkin, who is getting more and more playing time, is in the pullback. Green being chased, gets rid of it for Jeremy Thomas a little over his head. A little over his head because he was under duress. Brett Edens did a nice job of rushing the quarterback and then rushing that throw. Second down and 10. 3-0, 319 to go, opening quarter. Georgia not doing a very good job on first down. This is the fifth second down play that they've had of 10 yards or more. So they, they've converted some third downs, but first down has not been very good for them so far. Now Green with the change. Jeremy Thomas says, I hear you. And David Green goes right side from Michael Johnson. They got the first down. First down and 10. And Green goes from the spread formation. Blitz threatened. Good protection again for Green. Little crossing pattern underneath. Michael Johnson. Well, it was in this game a year ago that Michael Johnson caught 13 passes. Yeah. The most significant of which is simply referred to here as the catch. It was the game winner on 4th and 15. It came from the 19-yard line with a minute and 25 seconds to go. Michael Johnson, deep left side defending was Horace Willis, and Johnson made the grab as Georgia won it 24-21. And he's caught two balls already here today. And the amazing thing last year, going into that game, only 11 catches for the whole season, and 13 in that ball game. Here's Green, tipped by Brown, incomplete. Kevin oh, Hart, right. 49. They got Kevin Hobbs. I thought it was good coverage. I thought that he made a nice break on the football. The pass was a little bit high, but a late flag at the end of the play on Kevin Hobbs. Take a look at Reggie Brown working on Hobbs. He did grab him before he came out of his cut. Maybe it's a holding. Mm. Now there's the right hand on the shoulder. I take that back. Good call. I, I thought he got his hand on the football, but he had his hand on the shoulder pads of Reggie Brown. So it is a, a spot penalty, and it'll be first down and 10 at the 33-yard line. Well, it's been a tough season for this Auburn team, tough in the sense that they dug themselves an early hole. They lost their first two games, then won five in a row. But they've lost two of the last three. They were walloped at LSU 31-7 three weeks ago. And then lost a heartbreaker to Ole Miss last season. Here's Cooper going right and gets to the 30-yard line. Been that kind of a season, hasn't it? Well, it sure has. Uh, except for those guys from Norman. Second down from the 31. Cooper again. And uh, this is going to be a third and long for the Georgia Bulldogs for the fourth time in this uh, opening quarter. And this is where Auburn really needs a play from their defense. And uh, one of their big-time playmakers, Carlos Dansby, number 11, is a guy that, that needs to step up here. Reggie Torbor, their defensive end, number 82, had uh, three sacks on Eli Manning last week. One of those two guys needs to step up and make a play for the Tigers right here. Third and seven. Gibson and Johnson are the two wideouts. Fred Gibson, bottom of the screen. 
Here comes the blitz again. Green finds Michael Johnson for the third time. What is there about the Auburn Tigers that brings him to life? He's had a very modest season in 2003. Well, they have found a matchup that they like, and that is Michael Johnson working on Kevin Hobbs. If you're going to play off like that, when you come to make the tackle, you can't miss. It's a short completion, but a long gain because of a missed tackle by Kevin Hobbs. But this is the combination that they're working. Michael Johnson, a big physical receiver, against the junior Kevin Hobbs. First and goal. Double backs. Here's Cooper. Hit and driven down on first down. Well, Michael Johnson, number 25, a young man from Tulsa, Oklahoma. 16 catches for the first nine games. 16. And he's caught three for 51 already. He's coming back in the ball game today. And what, right now, what you might see, if they give him the matchup outside, they might throw a jump ball up to him and let him use that big body one-on-one -on -one to make a play. Now he's a 6'3", 220-pounder. He is coming to the left side, matched up against Carlos Rogers. Now Johnson starts in motion. Cooper on the sweep. Out of bounds, just short. See, the other thing that Michael Johnson gives Georgia is he is an excellent downfield blocker because he's big. He's 6'3", 230 pounds, so they can play him in these short yardage situations and he's leading on the play. Will Herring, the safety, with a nice play, getting his helmet on the football and not allowing Cooper to stretch it over the pylon for a touchdown. Well, the 22 on the field have a 99-yard trot. That's the end of the first quarter with our score of 3-0. We'll return after this message and a word from your local station. He's a Tiger, Uga Six. <laughs> that was from 1996. Uga Six, I was really taken with this. The public address announcer introduced the starting lineups 30 minutes before the game. He introduced Uga before he introduced the coach, Mark Richt. Hmm. Certain uh, hierarchy here. I have always been amazed that they bring that giant fire hydrant out when the team runs out, too. They got the flags, the cheerleaders, the team, and then the giant fire hydrant. Here's Billy Bennett with the kick. And that chases Aroma Shadu over to the far sideline. And again, he's got a big opening. Weaves right to Mario Minter. Got him, but not before Ben Aroma Shadu got it across the 50. And Georgia pointing that the ball was fumbled. There was a strip from behind. At the end of that run, Aroma Shadu was carrying the ball loosely. And Georgia thinks they have the football at midfield. It was a great return by Aroma Shadu, but right at the end, he was carrying it very loosely and away from his body. He gets pinned on the right sideline, but it's a left return, and he really hits it with great acceleration. But watch at the end how loose the ball is out away from his body, and from behind, it's going to get stripped out. Well, Chris Shaw of Georgia came out with it. And after another conversation, the officials have decided that it will be Georgia ball. Jarvis Jackson, the freshman linebacker, is the guy who didn't give up on the play and chased it down from behind. I guess the only question, of course it isn't a question now because they've ruled it was, did the ground cause the fumble or did the strip cause the fumble? Well, Tommy Tuberville grows in the degree of his exasperation. Fumbled by Aroma Shadu, first down and 10 at the 46-yard line. Lumpkin is the running back. Play fake, David Green going deep. Reggie Brown and Carlos Rogers do battle. Brown out of bounds. Good coverage by Carlos Rogers because he used the sideline as his friend. And he just kind of, by running and momentum in his body, just forced Reggie Brown further and further off the field. And when Reggie Brown finally got his hands on the football, he was way out of bounds. And Brown remains down. 
Now let's uh, revisit this kickoff and take another look at the uh, bobble by Aroma Shadu as Jarvis Jackson made the tackle. See, that, that, the ground caused the fumble there. I mean, it was a strip, but the ball didn't come out until the returner hit the ground. That should probably not have been a fumble, and Auburn should have had the football out deep. I mean, it was coming out. <laughs> yeah. That's close. That, that's really close. It wasn't all the way in there before he hit the ground. Second down and 10. Six nothing, Georgia. And off the Lumpkin contact made by Spencer Johnson right away. Six nothing in this game. Third. And 11. Oh, I'm getting turned around. <laughs> I've been doing this. Uh, I just went the wrong direction. That's what we're laughing about. Age. No. It's okay. Well, I mean, impressions you early know, on. You don't know which camera. There's no red lights on these cameras, so you don't know which one we're supposed to look at. But we got this screen over here. We're supposed to let that get on. I'm not ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> Third and 11. Oh, dear. <laughs> Here's Green. It's good to see you laugh. Over to the left side. Big stop for Auburn. Great I mean, sudden change. They get the turnover. Their defense comes on the field. And a three and out for the Auburn defense. That was huge for Tommy Tuberville's team. Georgia did not gain anything. In fact, they lost two yards on that possession. That is the first three and out for Georgia thus far. Fourth and 11. And Gordon Ely Kelso is on to punt. Trey Smith back at the 10 yard line. And Ely Kelso gets it away fairly low. Smith comes up, grabs it at the 20 to the 30. Tackled at the 33 yard line. Brian Jordan who snapped the ball is uh, down to make the tackle. Now three and out for this defense, but they need Auburn, uh, that is, needs to get something going when they've got the football. Six nothing, Georgia leads. Fashion show Wednesday at 10, 9 central on CBS. Pass on first down through the hands of Anthony Mix, number nine. Let's check in with Jill Arrington. I've earned the game in 1996 was the day that Uga and the Bulldogs took a bite out of the Auburn Tigers on the 100th meeting between the two teams. Look at that. Mike Bobo hit Corey Allen as time expired to send the game into overtime. And four overtimes later, Torin Kirksey scored on this one yard run and the Georgia D held Damian Craig on fourth and three to defeat the Tigers 56 to 49 in the first ever overtime game in the SEC. All right, Jill, thank you. That SEC moment brought to you by Sonic. And in the meantime, we have had another flag thrown here. Looks like uh, Troy Reddick might have moved offensively. False start against the offense. Movement within the offensive line. The penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Still second down. You mentioned the onus right now on Jason Campbell and the, the Auburn defense, or offense, because their defense has held them in here. They're only six down, but 16 yards of total offense in the first quarter for the Auburn Tigers. That's threatened by Thurman. He is coming. Campbell rolling to his right, drills it, and it's uh, caught up at the 39-yard line. The catch made by Silas Daniels, number 85, and that's a pickup of 11. Nice throw and a nice job by Silas Daniels coming back to the football. A lot of times when guys run those curl routes, they sit there and wait for the ball to get there, and that allows a defender to make a play. But you always want your receiver to move back towards the quarterback to make that catch. Well, third and four. Jason Campbell, four of six thus far, but uh, 0 for 2 on third down conversions for Auburn in the early going. Blitz, Campbell back, has a lot of time, but nobody open. See, too late. Too late when he runs. This defense of Georgia, very, very fast. He had a nice seam. He had a seam, and if he would have taken it right now, he would have probably got the first down. Now watch this open up. As this play starts, and there's some pressure coming from Georgia, 
Now, right now, he has a seam right there if he takes it. But he hesitated a little bit, and that enabled the pocket to collapse on him short of the first down. Now we go back to the beginning of the afternoon. You talked about uh, how significant third downs would be, and they have been here in the first half of play. Damian Gary awaits the punt from Cody Bliss. A flag is down. Another short punt, but uh, non-returnable. 34-yard punt, but the third fair catch. Now let's see uh, against whom this one is called. You know, as we wait for this, I, I got to say, I am amazed. I really am amazed at this Georgia defense and what they've been able to accomplish this year. Considering, first of all, the guys they lost in the draft last year, that's Brian Van Gorda, the defensive coordinator. He and his staff have done a great job. You look at their numbers, they lost significant guys in the draft last year. All their starting linebackers, Jonathan Sullivan, their best defensive lineman. And now they're playing today without five guys who were starters on the defense going into preseason. And uh, they just have continued to plug guys in there and have depth and have guys step up and play well for them throughout the course of the season. Sean Jones is the latest who is missing time. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. Got a emote. They should have some mascot survivors. They should, they should do a show on survivors of mascot? college mascots. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be good. First down, here comes the blitz. Here's Green with a play fake. Another it's a good down. block. Another you know, uh, so far this game, it's kind of like me trying to dance. It has no rhythm. <laughs> or find the right camera to look at. First down and 15 after the five-yard penalty. Tyson Browning is in the game for the first time. Gets the handoff. The elusive young running back comes right, gets out to the 21 yard line. Don Terrius Williams makes the stop. The current BCS rankings, we're just talking about TCU right there as number six. Now, if they stay as number six when the season's over, they're guaranteed a spot in one of the BCS bowl games. But, uh, you know, their schedule is just not going to help them down the stretch here. And uh, teams behind them like Tennessee, Michigan, Georgia, all those teams are going to have a great chance to pass them up. Second down and 12. Well run. Brett Edens read the screen. They tried to set up the screen to Tyson Browning. They had success on it in the first quarter, but that time Brett Edens from his defensive end position read it perfectly and stopped the throw. The Bulldogs look at third and 12. And this is their fifth third down play of over seven yards. They're two for four so far. Ryan McClendon and Michael Johnson of the wideouts deep across the middle. Johnson. The, wow. The big bottom. I mean, th this is a play and a throw that Herring had a chance to make a play, but because of the width of Johnson's body at 230 pounds, Herring is not able to get to the football. Now, this ball is thrown too far inside, and the defender has a chance to make a play, but it's such a big body to go around to get a hand on the ball that he can't make the play. Nice job of Michael Johnson using his strength, his body, to make the catch. Four receptions, 71 yards. He gets a rest. And here is Tyson Browning trying to find room, and they try to rip the ball out. That's DeMarco McNeil with the tackle. Nothing in the game. We haven't seen Fred Gibson in uh, a couple of series either. No, and uh, it begs the question, well, here he comes right now. He's going into play. You know, the other guy we haven't seen in the Georgia offense for a couple weeks is Ben Watson, their tight end. No catches in the Florida game, and this is an Auburn defense that gives you a lot of cover, too, which means the middle of the field is open, and if you have a tight end who can run, you can get some things down the middle. On second down, and off to uh, Tyson Browning, picks up three yards at left tackle. Carlos Dansby, number 11, is there to make the stop. Dansby, a preseason All-American pick, and uh, in spite of the woes that Auburn has had, he has had a fine year. Well, I love that neck roll with the tiger eyes on the back. That is, that is really cool. You know, it's not just doesn't have a name of a company or, you know, some right. big ugly thing. It's got tiger eyes on the back. <laughs> but Dansby, I mean, he's got great vision. He sees everything, so maybe he's got eyes in the back of his head, too. Time call by Georgia. That's the second they've had to use. 
And the clock stops with 9.43 to go. First half of play, Georgia by six. These beautiful overhead images of today's game, courtesy of the 1-800-Medicare Light Ship. The crew of the 1-800-Medicare Light Ship hope that you're enjoying today's game. Third down and nine. A 6 nothing Georgia lead. And David Green goes from the uh, spread formation. Auburn showing a blitz look. They are bringing the full complement. And yeah. Green has to throw it away. Flag flag down. down, probably holding on Georgia. And that time they decided to go with pressure. You know, the Auburn defense is a very good disguising defense. And they lined up and showed cover two that time and then came with the blitz at the snap. And uh, they fooled David Green that time. Reggie Torber and Auburn will decline this penalty. Holding against the offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Auburn coming with pressure. Carlos Dansby, a big physical guy. And there's Michael Cooper using good technique on the block. I mean, even though uh, there was not a, a positive play for Georgia, Michael Cooper looks much more comfortable blocking and pass protection than he did earlier in the season. Gordon Ely Kelso, who, uh, like Billy Bennett, his uh, special teams colleague, is a native of Athens. Back to punt for the second time. And Trey Smith awaits it uh, at the 17 yard line. Fourth down, a 6 nothing game. Two Billy Bennett field goals. Here's a surprise, another flag. This one goes into the end zone, but let's come back to the line of scrimmage and check the nature of this. No wonder this game has arrhythmia. <laughs> Way too many conversations in the middle of the field. So the option resting with Auburn once again. Well, you either get the ball on the 20-yard line because the kick went into the end zone, or do you want to try to let Trey Smith have a chance to return one? I think Tommy Tuberville has said, let's uh, decline it yeah. and take it from the 20. Yeah, with the way that your offense is struggling against this Georgia defense, you don't want to take a chance of putting him in a bigger hole than the 20-yard line because they have not. Illegal formation. Against the offense, ineligible by number, and move to an eligible receiver's position. The penalty is declined. First down. Auburn offense just has not found many answers against Georgia today. Now, even Ugga is not amused. We'll be back. All right, Tim, thank you. Ronnie Brown has made his first appearance in the backfield for the Auburn Tigers now. Cadillac Williams gets a rest. First down, this only the 11th play from scrimmage for Auburn. And Brown gets the handoff, goes right out to the 23. Let's check in with Jill Arrington. Well, Todd, earlier you were talking about all the bad things that the defense has been going through with all their injuries. And I talked to David Pollock yesterday, and he told me, he said, all the adversity we've been through is a blessing in disguise. He says it's taught us that we have more depth than we ever knew we had. In fact, more guys might come back next year to play next season. So that we've built a lot of character on this team through the adversity, the injuries, the early suspensions. And he says that this character is what's going to take us back to Atlanta. All right, Jill, they do have a chance, but they need this win to keep pace with both Tennessee and Florida in the East. Here's Ronnie Brown, he's strung out right side, good defensive pursuit. It, Robert Gathers and David Pollack. And it is now time for that much anticipated moment each week when we bring you the trivia question of the week. Name the most played rivalry in NCAA college football history, all divisions. All divisions in division one, this rivalry, which began in 1892, tied for seventh. Minnesota-Wisconsin played their 113th game earlier 
They are the leaders, but we're talking about all divisions. Auburn 0 for 3 on third downs today so far. Here's Campbell. Lobs it out left side by his tight end. That is an incomplete pass. Well, even if he catches it, he's 10 yards short of the first down or 8 yards short. I mean, Georgia's defense, when they get you in longer yardages on third down, they've only allowed their opponents to convert 25% coming into the day. And it's 0 for 4 now for Auburn in another punt situation. And a fine play by Kenny Bailey, cousin of the three brothers who played here. Most recently, Boss Bailey. And Damian Gary awaits Cody Bliss's punt. Gary, 19 for the season. And Georgia backs out. They've got to return on all the way. Cody Bliss into the hands of Gary. Good downfield coverage by Auburn. And Gary has stopped at the 42-yard line. Trey Smith. That's a 41-yard punt and five on the return. And it's time now for the Home Depot coach's decision. This one is a little unusual. A week ago, last Thursday, on the bye week, Mark Rick took his team to the diving well at the Ramsey Center here, and they had some fun. This is the head coach of Georgia about to attempt <laughs> a back dive from 33 feet above the water. Yeah, it was really a good move by Mark Rick and his staff because they had him dressed for practice. They had a team meeting and they said, okay, we're going to go practice in the stadium, kind of our new normal Thursday routine. And instead of taking a right to the stadium, they took a left to the Ramsey Center. And uh, even then, the guys didn't know exactly what was going on. Here's Johnson, halfback pass. Nobody fooled. Junior Rose Green is back, but the catch is made. Fred Gibson from Michael Johnson. Well, you know, the thing that Michael Johnson did was he threw the ball high enough and far enough that it enabled Fred Gibson to make a play on it. It wasn't a thing of beauty, but because it stayed up in the air so long, Fred Gibson was able to just kind of body his guy out and make the play. Rose Greens is in good position, but watch, it's like catching a punt. It was so high, and he just kind of squared up and made a one-handed catch with his right hand. 40 yards, how about this? They throw it back, go into the end zone, incomplete for Reggie Brown. Back-to-back -back flea flickers from Mark Rick. And part of that is respect for the Auburn defense. You got to go to the bag of tricks. Fred Gibson, I mean, just kind of boxed out his man and got the rebound. Mm. Ah, terrific catch as Junior Rose Green was shoved to the ground and Michael Johnson. Yeah. Says, Why not? I'm one for one this year. A 40-yard play. And now on second down and 10, Georgia leading by six. They've had to settle for two Billy Bennett field goals. They go into the end zone. Caught. Who else? <laughs> Michael Johnson. Why would it be anybody else? offensive series for Georgia. They went into the bag of tricks, they loosened up the Auburn defense, and then they went to the matchup they like again. Michael Johnson on Kevin Hobbs, perfectly thrown by David Green. Hobbs never even knew the ball was coming to him. Extra point is up and good. That's 113 in succession for Billy Bennett. Currently holds the longest uninterrupted streak. Michael Johnson from David Green. You think Auburn is sick of hearing that name? One year ago, on fourth and 15 from the 19 yard line with a minute 25 to go, Michael Johnson caught a 19 yard pass from David Green. Moments ago, on second and 10 from the 19, David Green found Michael Johnson for the first touchdown of the game. And you and I were talking, it might have been the same play. 70X takeoff in that kind of a formation, and I right, he is the X receiver, and it was a takeoff. Unbelievable. You know, I was talking to Mike Bobo, the quarterback coach, on the field before the game. He says, you know, we've got to have somebody step up and make some plays. I thought it would be Fred Gibson, and he made a big one on that drive, but Michael Johnson. He must like playing these Auburn Tigers, boy. Michael Johnson, 131 yards of offense today. Five catches for 91, and he threw a 
pass to Fred Gibson for 40. And a very short kick. Aroma Shadu comes up, grabs it. That was done on purpose because Aroma Shadu has hurt them on deep kickoffs. And that was an intentional high pooch kickoff to negate the return. Here's Fred Gibson. I want to show you on this touchdown what David Green saw. First, he's going to see the safety herring in here. That means he knows he's got one-on-one -on -one here, and then it's just a takeoff route to the X receiver. The safety's inside, so there's no help over the top, and he just throws it up and outside, and Kevin Hobbs, in defense there, never knew the ball was even there. 13-0 with 7.48 to go before the break, and Ronnie Brown is still in a tailback. And I think Auburn needs to, to not get away from trying to run the football some. Good first down completion, but th the problem is I don't think they can run outside on this Georgia defense. I think if they want to run, they've got to really get strong on the inside and run inside between the tackles. That means their guards, Reddick and Crittenden, their center, Lindsey, have to really bulk up. Their fullback, Brandon Johnson, has to do a good job blocking on Odell Thurman, but that's where I think they have an opportunity to run is inside against this Georgia defense. Jarris McIntyre with that last catch. It's second down and five. There's Campbell. Comes over to the near side to his tight end Cooper Wallace. And Auburn does get a first down. That is their second first down of the ball game. Well, a bye week for Georgia after the bitter defeat at the hands of Florida down in Jacksonville two weeks ago, 16 to 13. And Mark Richt, of course, took his team to the, the diving well at the Ramsey Center where the swim team cooperated and said take over. Here's the pass out to the right side. And that one is going to be ruled incomplete. You know, it was interesting talking with uh, David Pollock and David Green, as we've done over the last three years, how much they thought that move by Mark Richt help loosen everybody up on this team. He said, David Pollock said, we've all been so tight with yeah. the high expectations. Well, and I think that's the way this season has felt for Mark Richt and everybody on this team because they started the season with the suspensions, then they had the injury, so it's been a grind the whole time. Every week, every quarter, every play, it's had the feel of a grind. And uh, between the natatorium and the flea flickers today, <laughs> they're having a little more fun. Like a high dive for the uh, entire bunch. Here's Campbell on the run. Bruce Thornton is out, grabs him by an ankle, and does not let go. Let's uh, check in once again with Jill down on the sideline. Well, you guys saw Michael Johnson showing his moves on the field today, but he must have lost some fear while he was diving off those boards. In fact, he's the one that pulled that double back flip off the five meter, really impressed his teammates. I heard Ray Gant had some pretty fancy moves on that three meter board, but Daniel Inman at 320 pounds, he had a swan dive, but you know, his teammates called it the whale dive. Yeah, Daniel Inman and a swan dive, that's, that's yeah. an incompatibility. Right. Third and seven, Auburn yet to convert on third down. Here's Campbell with time, deep right side, man coverage. Obamanu can't hang on. Good coverage defensively by Bruce Thornton, number seven. Yeah, it was good. Blitz pick up by Auburn. Good protection, a good throw by Jason Campbell, but the best play made by Bruce Thornton because the throw was, was right there. It was a well-thrown ball, and Bruce Thornton able to get his hand in there and knock the ball out. And that's going to bring Damian Gary on, Cody Bliss to punt for the fifth time. Fourth and seven. And again, they nice and high. This one. Yeah. Another flag down. Flag thrown. How many penalties is that so far in the game? Boy, oh boy. Seven. And this one hasn't been accepted yet. Earthlink halftime report coming up with uh, scores and highlights. Tim and Spencer back in our New York studios. Sure, we'll find out how the fly in the ointment is doing. Well, this is a scene we've seen uh, more than we need.
During the kick, illegal blocking it back against the return team. The penalty will be post scrimmage kick enforcement. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Well, let's uh, take another look, uh, Todd, at the last year's touchdown, this year's touchdown. Yeah, last year's on the right. The one we just saw to Michael Johnson now last year was out of the shotgun this year under the center with a play fake but it was a takeoff to the X receiver. <laughs> Once the ball got in the air it looked pretty similar didn't it. Man. Now all you need to do is put Horace Willis in the place of Kevin Hobbs and the uh, play looked exactly here's another flag. Well, this one's going to be a face mask. I mean Auburn feeling like they had Georgia right where they want him here with five minutes and 30 seconds left in the half. They've got him backed up and Lumpkin with a huge run and Will Herring at the end of the play trying to make the tackle is going to get called for a face mask. That was a that was a good run by Craig Lumpkin. Holding against the offense. Yeah. The penalty is half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Replay first down. I'll take that back. It wasn't a face mask. Well, time now to answer the Affleck. trivia question. The most played rivalry in NCAA college football history, all divisions. And the answer is Lehigh against Lafayette. They have played 138 hmm. times. Ah, Duck made the trip. Hope he's glued in there. Of course, we don't have any wins. So. No. On first down, here's Green. Trying to throw it away. Pressured in the end zone, and he does throw it away. Nice David coverage. Green hit by Travis Williams, number 51. Nice coverage and uh, nice effort by the Auburn defense. I mean, they got the penalty. They've got him backed up. And uh, this is an Auburn offense that needs some help right now. Either from the special teams or from the defense, they need a turnover. They need something. Second and seven. Green sacked just once today, but uh, hurried five times, and he has been knocked down twice. Second and seven from the nine. Lumpkin in. Play single. fake. That deflected. They, they had it. That was single coverage. Fred Gibson and Brett Edens got his hand on the football and knocked it down. <laughs> Third and seven at the nine. Handoff. It's Lumpkin right side, and the Bulldogs will be forced to punt, and Auburn will get, uh, should get really good field position out of this, and then it's up to their offense to do something constructive. 4.52 to go, first half, 13 0, Georgia. And one thing that Auburn's going to try to do is to put Carnell Williams back along with Trey Smith to return this punt. And Carnell Williams is one of the, if not the best offensive player in this conference, and he has been a non factor so far today. Two years ago here in Athens, he dominated the game with 41 carries, but he has been a non issue for Auburn today. This is pretty smart. Get his hands on the football some way, somehow. Ely Kelso will punt from the end zone. And Cadillac Williams uh, is back with Trey Smith. Auburn setting up a return all the way. They're going to try to double one of the uh, gunners. And this one is returnable. Williams from the 45 yard line going right. Tackled from behind by Kenny Bailey well, nice at the play. 37 yard line. Good defensive play by Bailey. And Cadillac Williams, who has carried just twice for three yards. He is in the backfield and they got to change that. I mean he, he's too good a player to be a decoy. Here's Campbell being chased hauled down by Odell Thurman who has had a very very active first half. Odell Thurman is just getting better and better each game. I mean he's a he's a young man who has had to battle through a lot of adversity. He came to Georgia in 2001 didn't qualify academically went to Georgia Military College for a year came back. Had to uh, has survived the the loss, the death of both of his parents, his father this past August, and uh, he is just getting the more he plays, the more this sophomore is, is uh, improving on this Georgia defense. That's a loss of three, a second down and 13 from the 40. Now the blitz, good blitz pickup on Harrison. The pass is knocked away by Tim Jennings, number 23. Jennings, who uh, got his starting spot. When DeCorey Bryant went out with uh, 
a fractured neck earlier in the season. Jennings has had his adversity this year too. Was suspended for three games and then he came back. He was the guy who got beat on the game-winning touchdown against LSU by Skyler Green, but uh, has settled into the starting role here very nicely. Auburn is 0 for 5 on third down conversions. And I think they need to think about getting about half of this. I think they'll go for it on fourth down if they don't make it here. Max Blitz by Georgia. Campbell pulls up, lets it go, man. Open incomplete. Intended for Silas Daniels. Can't get there. Now, uh, I don't know if they will. If they would have got some yardage, they would have gone for it, I think, on fourth down. But at fourth and 13, your chances of converting are very slim. You know, the biggest difference that I'm seeing is, is this Georgia defense is so fast that, that when Campbell thinks he has a crease or he thinks he has a chance to make a break, they are closing that so quickly. Last week, those creases didn't close quite so quickly when he played against Ole Miss. Here is the uh, pooch punt from Cody Bliss, nice and high. And uh, Gary backs out. Nice. And this one is uh, going to be down at the five-yard line. Yeah, Trey Smith down there doing a nice job. Now we've talked about the length of this series. Uh, let's get more from Jill Arrington. 107th meeting between Auburn and Georgia. The Tigers winning as coach Shug Jordan went 15 and 10 versus the Dogs. In 59, Fran Tarkenton and the Dogs clinched the SEC title with a victory over Auburn. Beginning in 64, former Auburn player Vince Dooley became head coach of Georgia and split 25 games versus his alma mater. All right, Jill, thank you. Single coverage again outside. I, I doubt Georgia wants to throw here, but they're getting a lot of single coverage with nine guys in the box for Auburn to stop the Georgia running game. Uh, Michael Cooper on that carry and T.J. Jackson came in. Now Georgia has used two of its three timeouts. Auburn, if they could just manage to hold yeah. Georgia here, has all three of its timeouts remaining, 2.35 well, to go. If they get a stop right here on second down, they'll use a timeout. It's second and 10. If they can hold them here, They'll use one of those timeouts and try to force another punt. Meanwhile, Georgia is going to milk the clock. Right. They're going to let this 25-second time go down as far as they can before they snap the football. Well, it's now down to seven. And here's Green. Hand off Cooper. Gets a little bit of help, and he goes left after the 11-yard line. That'll set up third and uh, four as we uh, near the two-minute mark of time remaining here in the first half of play. I'm a little surprised that Auburn not using a timeout here. Maybe they're going to wait till after the third down play to use it. Save that way they could try to save two of them for their offense when they come back on the field. Well, they do not use one. Georgia five of ten on third down so far today. We said coming in that was going to be one of the key things. Auburn 0 for 6. Georgia 5 for 10 on third down so far. And Green out of the spread. Flips it out, caught by Reggie Brown. Fumble out of bounds. And that was ruled a completed catch, and the ball knocked out of bounds. And you know what? He had the first down, I think, if he doesn't fumble it. When he fumbled it, the ball went backwards, and he lost the first down. Reggie Brown, it's a catch and a fumble. And if he holds on to the ball, it's a first down for Georgia. But because the ball went backwards and out of bounds, they lost two yards, and they have to punt. The clock does stop when the ball went out of bounds. So 122 remaining in the half. And again, it's going to be Cadillac Williams and Trey Smith back to return the punt of Gordon Ely Kelso. And Auburn didn't have to use any timeout. So they have their full complement of three with a minute 22 left. Brian Jordan will snap it back. Setting up the return again. Doubling one of the gunners down at the bottom of the screen, trying to give Cadillac Williams as much room as they can. He has it at the 48-yard line. Good coverage. Sure was. But it's just a quick, quick team. Both these teams have outstanding team speed, and that shows up on defense, and it shows up in the special team. Losers in that uh, very competitive game last week, 24-20. That one tipped by David Pollock, and then caught. Yeah, I think they're going to rule it a catch, but the bad news for Auburn is the clock keeps rolling. And they're going to use one of their timeouts now because of that. Four wide receivers in the ballgame. 
For a lot of room on the slot receiver. Here comes and Pollock, in. screen pass, left side. And there's the pursuit. They knock Cadillac Williams whoa, down. Whoa. Tim Jennings was the first one there. Well, we've seen Auburn try to throw two screens, one to a wide receiver, one to a back, and Georgia has been ready for both of them. Pollock in pursuit. Then he sees, wait a minute, screen. Let me try to get my hands on it. And just excellent reaction by the Georgia defense. And third and long again for Auburn. Yet to convert. Four-man rush, Campbell. Bumped as he lets it go. Jarris McIntyre short of the first down. It'll be fourth down as Kenny Bailey makes the tackle. Well, they have to go for it. I mean, the, but the clock is running down. I mean, that. And they've got a timeout left, which they inexplicably do not use. I, I think they just used it. They just used it right now with three seconds left. And I think what they're going to just try to do is take one shot at the end zone. Rather than try to convert and have another play or two, they're going to just go with one play. We'll see what happens when we come back. Well, we're back with three seconds to go in the half at the uh, at the conclusion of the third down play, probably 12 seconds remaining. And uh, nine seconds ran off, and now they're going to try the field goal. Huh. Georgia lined up. They thought they were going to go for the Hail Mary. They had half their team back at the goal line, and now Georgia has called a timeout to set up a field goal rush. Well, Philip Yost has kicked one this season from 57 yards away. You know, I'm a little surprised at, at Auburn's strategy at the end of the half here. As you take a look, I mean, here back here, there's a bunch of Georgia guys lined up at the goal line to prevent a Hail Mary. And when they saw Auburn come out for the field goal, they called timeout. But, you know, fourth and five, if they convert that with even a six-yard pass, they have a much better shot at making a field goal. However, you know, they, they're 0 for 7 on third down, so uh, they haven't had a lot of success converting when they've needed it today. Well, this one, if they go ahead and attempt this for Philip Yost, it's going to be a 59 yarder. Now, the one thing for Georgia, their field goal blocker is Sean Jones, who is not playing today with the uh, shoulder injury. He's their jumper. He has two field goal blocks on the season. Now, there's no helping wind nor hindering wind, so Yost will uh, just use the effort of his leg and see if he can hammer this one home yep. from. Let's see where the spot winds up. It looked like 59 yard effort. See, the thing you worry about when you're kicking a field goal of this kind of distance is not getting enough height on the football. I, st I still don't quite understand why you leave with a timeout in your back pocket. Yeah. Uh, why not try one more play, give him a better shot? But uh, they chose to let the clock run down to three seconds. Well, I think it's I think it's the fact that they just have not felt like they've had any answers for the Georgia defense in third or fourth down passing situations. Jeremy Wells will snap it. Justin Fetzko holds it and Philip Yost from 59 yards. Short. Might have been good from 49. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. Well, that was an impressive half for Georgia, particularly by their defense. The offense, David Green got a touchdown in the red zone to go along with it. And Jill is with Tommy Tupperville. Jill? Coach Tupperville, once again, you're having trouble with the third down conversions. We're seeing you pass the ball a lot more than Auburn usually does. What do you need to do to get that running game going? Well, we're probably not going to run it the second half. We're going to line up and just spread them out. We can't handle their front four, and, uh, you know, we can't handle a Average two yards a run on first down just puts Jason in a bind. But defensively, we're playing fine. Heck, we've been out there all day. But, uh, you know, they got a good football team. If we don't do something on offense, it doesn't make a lot of difference. We just got to score some points. All right, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. All right. That's the end of the half. Our score here is 13 to nothing. David Pollock appears satisfied. Let's go back to Tim Brando in New York. Thanks, Vern. Coming up on the Earthlink Halftime Report, Spencer Tillman and I will have all of today's scores and highlights, including high fives for two guys who had career days after this word from your local station.
Frank Wright for the Georgia Bulldogs for the first 30 minutes of play. They lead it 13 nothing. They won the toss to begin the game, deferred their option till the third quarter, and have elected to receive. So Philip Yost will kick off for the first time in the ball game for Auburn. Deep man Brian McClendon and Craig Lumpkin for the Bulldogs of Georgia. 13 nothing. Georgia leads it. And this one will be taken by Lumpkin at the goal line. Comes right and cut down at the uh, 17. And uh, surprise of surprises, we have a flag. And just a moment ago, Jill Arrington had a chance to chat with Mark Rick. Well, Coach Rick, we're seeing some more offensive consistency from your team. What did you tell them about finishing that complete game with everything on the line today? Well, that's what we got to do. We've gotten better offensively. That's a great defense we're playing against, but we've made enough plays to move the ball. We haven't, again, got this, the touchdowns that we'd hoped down there, and I made a foolish call down there on the one that really hurt us, but uh, thankfully he didn't pick it off, and we got points on the board. Defense is playing well, uh, but we got to keep the intensity up because all it takes is one play, and they're within a touchdown to take the lead. So it's just not that comfortable of a lead right now. All right, Coach. Well, good luck. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jill. You know, and that, that's the way the season has been the whole year for Georgia. I mean, th there's no, there's been no time for them to relax. It just feels like every game, every play is so important because it's, a, it's been a bit of a struggle because of the injuries, suspensions, and the adversity that they faced this year. Penalty against Georgia on the kick return. So David Green and the offense open up from their own eight yard line. Here's the snap back and Green fires it to Reggie Brown. And that one is incomplete out to the 18 yard line. Well, Vern Lundquist along with Todd Blackledge and Jill Arrington. We began the day a couple of hours ago talking about third downs and big plays. Yeah, and I really thought those would be the two key barometers in the game. Who would win on third down? And so far in the first half, Georgia much better. 5 of 11 on third down. Auburn 0 for 7. And those big plays, plays of 20 yards or more, Georgia with three of them. Auburn has yet to have a play over 20 yards. So it uh, really has been the story of the ball game so far. Second down and 10. Here's the handoff to Cooper. Nailed. Lost yardage back to the 5. Big play by DeMarco McNeil, number 92. Now let's break it down statistically at the half as uh, Georgia pitches a shutout for the third time this season. Boy, the one that stands out to me is rushing yards for Auburn. Nine and third down conversions. Yeah. Oh. Four, seven. And, and I want to talk more when Auburn gets on offense about that running nine yards but only eight rushing attempts and your best player on your football team Carnell Williams only two carries for three yards as the sun sets behind Sanford Stadium the Bulldogs look at third and 13 from the five play fake green pumps up goes to Reggie Brown is deep and he cannot hang on to it. I'll tell you what, Kevin Hobbs is, is fortunate because, again, he had no idea the ball was coming, and it was a little bit underthrown, and Reggie Brown had a chance to make the catch because Kevin Hobbs didn't know where the football was. Mm. Uh, as they have done the previous three punts, Cadillac Williams and Trey Smith are both back, and again, Georgia is going to yield good field position right. to the Auburn Tigers here. Well, Mark Rick was right. This is a great Auburn defense. Not a good defense, a great defense. And they have played with their back against the wall this entire football game so far. But it still is just a 13-point football game. Here's Edith Kelso from midway in the end zone. Nice, high, spiraling putt. Cadillac Williams avoids the first tackle and gets across the 50 to the 48-yard line crowd reacting to Carnell Williams on that return his knee looked like it was down on the big screen and they gave him about six or seven more yards on the return I still think they can run the football against Georgia a little bit they will throw on first down and Cooper Wallace the tight end makes the grab at the 41 yard line see the problem with only throwing and, and, and trying to just spread out and throw is Georgia is not respecting anything deep in the Auburn passing game. They completed nine passes in the first half, but for an average of only five yards per reception. So they've squeezed everything down. And, and I think the only way Auburn's going to get some big plays in the passing game is by setting it up with the run. Running inside, play action, and throwing down the field. Second down and three. Backs in the eye. Cadillac Williams is the deep back. They do give it to him on the draw play. And he comes left. And it works. 
inside the 30-yard line as the uh, stops are made by Thomas Davis and Greg Blue. See, he's the best football player on Auburn's team, Carnell Williams. And for him to go 30 minutes and only have three yards on two carries, it's going to be hard to beat anybody when your best football player is a non-factor. And that's a great way to get him started in the second half. Second and short, run the football, get Carnell Williams excited about the game. And he is. Gain of 14 on first down. Johnson, the fullback, looks like he might lead this one to the right. Play fake. Campbell, deep man coverage. Up and incomplete, Jarris McIntyre. He had a shot at it. I think he had both hands on the football. Jennings was in pretty good position, but Jennings is a short cover guy at only five foot eight. And Jarris McIntyre went up and had both hands on the football. Play action, they go deep. He bodies him out of the position and just couldn't make the catch. And it was McIntyre on fourth down last week who had it tipped away by Ole Miss. That was after Obamanu had dropped a sure reception for the win. Second and ten. Williams, nice move. What a beautiful little shift that was. Yeah. And look at Carnell. I mean, just look at his body language in two carries. He was a non-factor. Probably didn't even break a sweat in the first half after warm-ups. And now two carries into the second half. And Auburn looks like a different football team. Again, they only had a handful of plays in the first half. Only eight rushing attempts in the first half. Darnell Williams with carries of 14 and 15 has gone over 1,000 yards for the season. High formation on first down. And here's Williams for his third carry. That's one more than he had in the entire first 30 minutes. He stopped at the 10. Odell Thurman is the first man there. Again, where this Georgia defense is difficult, I think, to run on is outside because of the speed of their linebackers and the tackling ability of their safeties. I'm not convinced that their inside defensive tackles, particularly as banged up as they have been, is where the real strength of this run defense is. One wide out, that's Courtney Taylor. He is wide right. Ben Grubbs, a tight end, goes in motion to the right side, now comes back. On second down, Williams gets the handoff to the stutter step in the backfield. It will be third down as Odell Thurman yeah. makes yet another tackle from that middle linebacker spot. And helped by Thomas Davis. And again, uh, Odell Thurman, we said it earlier in the game, is a guy that just gets better and better. He's a sophomore out of Monticello High School. Went to Georgia Military College for one year to get squared away academically. And the more he plays, the better he gets. And again, this is a Georgia defense that lost all three starting linebackers to the NFL last year. Third and six at the eight. Auburn yet to convert a third down. They are 0 for 7. Three wideouts on the field. Here's Campbell, right side. That one is incomplete. It'll be fourth down. And a nice play by Bruce Thornton. He came off his man and made a play on the football. See, he read the quarterback. He read the route. This guy's going to go the end zone. He's going out. And Bruce Thornton left his man and came up to make the play on the football. The ball was thrown outside, but Thornton was there to make the play anyway. Now, Philip Yost will come on and attempt the field goal. He made two from 30 yards last week, but he missed a critical field goal from 32. This one will be from 25 for Philip Yost. And he has to make this one. And he doesn't. Oh, my. There is nothing more demoralizing than that right there. Your defense gets a three and out. Your running back gets you down there. And you have nothing to show for it. That is unacceptable right there. Time has been called. Welcome back to Auburn, Georgia. In 1971, Heisman winner Pat Sullivan led the Tigers to a resounding victory. The Bulldogs were undefeated during the Herschel Walker era, and the Tigers turned the tables in the Bo Jackson era. Now there is no more miserable man in this stadium than Philip Yost. Second week in a row, he's missed from short. Two weeks ago, Tom Tuberville told us he was thinking of making a change. 
John Vaughn is the other regularly listed place kicker, but uh, he's four of eight for the season. They might go to Cody Bliss, who's the punter. And here is the handoff. But how disheartened, Todd, it's can this just, Auburn team be? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's so critical. I mean, now the one he missed at the end of the half, that was a hard kick. That was a long field goal. But, you know, when you're fighting and clawing and scratching to try to get back in the ball game and you have a chance to put points on the board, you just have to be able to capitalize. And, and you're right, there's nobody that feels worse than that young man right there. But right now for Auburn, it's up to those five seniors on this starting defensive unit to step up and not let this thing get away from him. Guys like Reggie Torborn, Spencer Johnson, DeMarco McNeil, Carlos Dansby. On second down and five, Green avoids a tackle, then finds Mario Rayleigh, number 80. And that's good for a first down at the 40-yard line. You know, Nebraska's defense has played well this year, except when they go against mobile quarterbacks. They've had trouble against those kind of guys. Uh, David Green hangs his receiver out to drive. Boy, Michael Johnson was exposed for the collision with Junior Rose Green then. Yeah. Uh, you think Michael might say something to... Well, actually, Michael's probably really happy that David's thrown it to him so much. He hadn't had much action this year. So you're willing to take a couple shots like that as long as the ball keeps coming your way. Oh, the ribs. <laughs> Pass distribution in this game. Johnson with five. Gibson Brown two. Rayleigh and Lumpkin one apiece. Second down and ten. 13 nothing. Michael Cooper again the running back. And Auburn brings four. They hand it off to Cooper. He comes right. Gets a block almost from Michael Johnson. Had he gotten the block, it would have been an extra 10, 15 yards. But he, the key block he got was from Josh Brock on Carlos Dansby. That was the block that sprung it. Take a look at Josh Brock. He's going to get a block. Number 60 on Carlos Dansby. Right there is the key block in the play, and that enabled Cooper to slip it inside. It's kind of a trap play. You're pulling the guard out there, and he blocks their best guy, and your running back makes a first down. That's a gain of 10 and a first down at the 49-yard line. Now Craig Lumpkin is the running back. Green hands it off to the freshman. And he plunges over right guard down near the 42-yard line as Dontarius Thomas, number 54, makes the tackle. The biggest improvement in the Georgia football team as this season has unfolded has been in their running game. The last two weeks ago in their loss to Florida, they ran for a season-high 202 yards. And if you take out the four sacks, they actually ran for 235 yards against the Gators. And They've been able to depend on their running game much more than their passing game so far this year. Lumpkin with room going left as Junior Rose Green and Thomas. Thomas gets the tackle, but Lumpkin is inside the 30 after a gain of 13 yards. And again, Josh Brock leading the way. His fullback, Jeremy Thomas, also leading on the play. And you see the power in the leg drive of Craig Lumpkin. A nice one-two combination between Lumpkin and... Cooper, and then Tyson Browning is kind of the, the scat back guy that gives you a little change of pace when he's in. All of this after the missed 25-yard yep. field goal. That's right. And I'm looking over at that Auburn bench, and there is about 30 yards between Philip Yost and any of his teammates. He is sitting uh, all by himself. Here's a handoff to the 25-yard line. There's Yost. Mm -hmm. Still hasn't, hasn't changed his posture since we last peeked in on him. Now, Cody Bliss is going to walk down and... Uh, Give him a little pat. Or give him some company. Yeah. Was that misery loves company, right? Heard mm. that. Second and eight. Here's Cooper again. It'll be third down. Yeah. Big play right here for the Auburn defense. They've given up some plays in this drive, mainly running plays. But now they've got Georgia in a third and eight. Uh, and this is not guaranteed field goal range for Billy Bennett right here. If they can hold here. 13-0 to score, third and eight, as we have 7.15 to go, third quarter. Green with 148 yards throwing the ball. Lumpkin, eight for 43, and Michael Johnson erupting for five catches for 91 yards today. On third and eight, Auburn looks like they might be, no, now they're going to back out. They send four. Green has got Gibson, and it's a first down at the six-yard line. It's the tight end, Watson. 
89 instead of 82. Well, he had no catches two weeks ago against Florida. His first catch today. Ben Watson is right here. He's going to run a little out route, and David Green's going to find him in the soft spot of this Auburn defense and give him the football. He was looking there all the way, and he stuck it in there for the first down. And yet another conversion for David Green on third down. Watson, who has been uh, a mystery man for this ball club, they've not gone to him much this season. There's the handoff to Jeremy Thomas, number 41. The fullback with a rare carry. That's only his 12th run of the year. That's the old belly series. <laughs> a lot of teams used to run that where they put the ball in the belly of the fullback and carry out the option fake. Let Jeremy Thomas say, hey, thanks for the protection. Thanks for the blocking on the lead plays here. Have a little bone, run the football. Mark Rickstein, second and goal at the five. 13 nothing. And Green with a play action, being chased, got him. From Marco McNeil, that's twice he's done that. He's made sacks of David Green twice on bootlegs, right when his team has needed it. He's very quick off the football. That's the thing. He's right in the middle. He's very quick. He slips in the block of Daniel Inman, the tackle. Inman was trying to cut him off to the inside, and McNeil used his quickness to get to the quarterback. He's one of those seniors, one of those five seniors on this defensive front that needs to step up, and he did right there. And that's going to bring up a third and goal from the 16, 523 to go, third quarter of play. David Green, I mean, they are working the clock right now. I mean, they're letting the 25-second clock go down to one. They're going to call timeout to set up this third down play. Time called with 5.14 to go, third quarter, and Georgia leading by 13. As darkness has descended upon Athens, Georgia, 13-0, third and goal from the 16-yard line. Michael Johnson comes wide to the right. And there he is right there. Here's Green, handoff. They give it off to Lumpkin. He's at the five, touchdown! And guess who got the big block? Michael Johnson. Boy, they really tricked him up. Third and goal from the 16. Gene Chizik and the Auburn defensive staff thinking pass all the way. And they go power run to the tight end side out of the eye formation. Good blocking by the fullback. Jeremy Thomas leading the way, and Michael Johnson downfield with a big block that gets Lumpkin into the end zone. Extra point up. Oh my. He missed it. That's the first time in 113 extra point attempts that Billy Bennett has not converted. So the longest streak active in NCAA football comes to an end. The last time he missed was as a sophomore. But how about Mark Richt? He told Jill at the half he made a bad call on a previous third down play. Made up for it with that one. So you want to be a mascot? No, no I, I just wanted to do a show. Survivor mascot. <laughs> Harry do all right. Yeah. Not as good as him. Though. No, this yeah, is the best. Ugga would, he'd probably win. I'll get six. As long as he had a bag of ice, he'd be good shape. <laughs> anywhere they put him. <laughs> He'll do a nasty turn on you. Here's Billy Bennett with a kickoff. 19 nothing. An 80 yard drive. Culminates in a 16 yard run. Aroma should do. Number one, he's going to be nailed at the 25-yard line. Jarvis Jackson up over the top. And let's take another look at that touchdown run. Well, I want you to see two key blocks. The first one is by the tight end, Ben Watson. The other one's by Michael Johnson. Now, Watson's going to block Dansby, and Johnson's going to come in and block this safety. Watch these two guys get key blocks. Jeremy Thomas, the fullback, is going to lead the way. There's the blocks there. Just a, a well-executed play, but you mentioned it. The call by Mark Rick, third and goal from the 16, go to the power run. It really fooled the Auburn defense. Ronnie Brown is the tailback now. Cadillac Williams had such a marvelous start to the third quarter. Here's Campbell with a play fake, fires, 
caught up at the 39 yard line. Catch is made by Courtney Taylor, number 86. Now things are a little bit different. I mean, you, you still don't have to completely abandon the running game, but now it's a 19 to nothing lead. So it's a three score football game now. Now you have to lean on uh, Jason Campbell and his ability to throw the football. But again, the, the Georgia defenders, I mean, there's no separation <laughs> that the Auburn receivers are getting. Every throw is contested by the Georgia secondary. And uh, another graphic demonstration of uh, Auburn's inability to run, except for those three runs by Cadillac Williams. Now here's Ronnie Brown, who came on so brilliantly a year ago when Cadillac Williams was out with a uh, fractured ankle. Ronnie Brown, who started the season in competition with Cadillac Williams. Yeah, you know, just it, it, it's amazing to think back, Todd, to the beginning of the season and the coverage of the Auburn Tigers, the front page of the sports section of the New York Times, mm -hmm. a full color photograph of Cadillac Williams, Ronnie Brown, Trey Smith, and Brandon Jacobs, the best running team in the country, and they haven't been able to do it again today. Here's the pass to Aroma should do. That's only his third catch of the season. Now he's a marvelous player and has been. Here's Campbell being chased. Gets up. Now still runs. But he comes down at the 43 yard line. Odell Thurman again with help as Quentin Moses. Number 94 was a, a very active part of that. Mm -hmm. Jason Campbell did a nice job of avoiding a sack and turning it into somewhat of a positive game, bringing up a second and five situation. Well, for Auburn, this is their fourth possession that has gotten into Georgia territory, and they still have no points on the scoreboard. Wright is down, Ronnie Brown is down, short of the first down, so. Robert Gathers, number 90. With the tackle. Now I want to go back to a, a point I made earlier about this Georgia defense. I, it, it really is amazing to me when you consider what they lost coming into this season. Before the season started, they lost the, the defensive end who was going to start opposite of David Pollock, Will Thompson, with an ankle. And for the most part, they basically lost their all SEC safety, Kentrell Curry. He tried to play midway Holding through the season against the offense. The penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay second down. But they basically lost him, and that forced the move of Thomas Davis from linebacker to safety, which turned out to be a brilliant move. But then they've also lost now Kedrick Golston, their best run-stopping defensive tackle, to Corey Bryant, one of their starting senior corners, and Sean Jones not playing today. I mean, it really is amazing how they've been able to just keep on keeping on. Second down after the holding call, Tim Jennings threatening the blitz now he backs out here comes uh, Thurman the middle linebacker oh boy a deep cleater by Greg Blue well we just mentioned the injuries Greg Blue had a knee injury that kept him out of the first five ball games and he's in there starting for Sean Jones and making his presence felt in the middle of the field Courtney Taylor was the fee lee to see again no separation, no threat of the Auburn passing game. Everything is right in front of the Georgia defenders, and they're squeezing everything. Saw Sean Jones in civvies with his jersey on the sidelines. Third down. 0 for 8 on third down conversions. Blitz again. Campbell, here comes Park. Campbell is being chased out to the left, pulls up and fires it. Out of bounds. Obamanu was there, but he was out of bounds, and Ken Veal completed the chase yeah. initiated by David Pollock. And Ken Veal is a 310-pounder who's battled through some injuries himself this year, giving chase. That's a healthy, studious look. Yes, it is. Ken Veal, fourth down. He could read the book and then rip it in half. <laughs> Fourth and 15. Very high. And again, Gary with a fair catch. Oh, goodness sakes. What are you thinking? Jarris McIntyre. 
Well, I got to believe he didn't see the fair catch signal. That doesn't seem to be a, a characteristic play of Jarris McIntyre. I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. Now this is one receiver, wide receiver to another. There was a signal McIntyre's going to come in, and uh, everybody else saw it. I don't know he how did. he didn't yeah. see it. Now Damian Gary, a young man who is the all-time leading punt returner. Against the kicking team. The field is 15 yards from the end of the kick. First down. And that was called a personal foul, not the interference with the ability to make the catch. That was a personal foul, 15-yard penalty on McIntyre, and rightfully so. That was the right call to make in this situation. Georgia leads it 19-0 with 2.10 to go third quarter. Last time they had a halftime lead uh, in which they had blanked Auburn. Here goes all the way back to 1967. They held Auburn scoreless and wound up winning that one by a 17 nothing count. First and 10 Georgia and Tyson Browning is back in the lineup gets the handoff. Starts left and cuts back right and picks up three. Let's go down to uh, Jill Arrington who's with Sean Jones. That's right and with an injured Sean Jones he had a stinger in the last game. You had the off week just still not feeling your best. You're going to be back on the field next week though. Yeah I should be back. You know we've been um, in the weight in the training room you know, trying to get my shoulder back right. You know, we've been working hard on that, but we're just, you know, trying to get the bat right for next week against Kentucky. We're um, doing well against Auburn. So this week against Kentucky, you know, we're going to get a win. Okay, let's watch this play together real quick. All right. Sean Jones, an outstanding safety for this Georgia team. Here's uh, Browning coming right. He's in jail. Jill? Well, Sean, you're the last person they wanted to see come out on defense. You've had so many guys injured. How does the defense just keep stepping up for each other? We just we just try to play as a team, you know. I mean, we all love each other. We just try to play for each other, you know. I mean, that's that's basically our chemistry. And like I'm playing through Red, Blue, and Thomas Davis right now, you know. I can't be out there. And they're doing very well. Blue just had a big hit, and I, you know, I'm very proud of them. I thought you saw that hit. You gave him a big high five, huh? Yeah, I did. I mean, I just can't wait to get out of next week, you know, and get back with those guys and um, get ready for Kentucky. All right. Well, thank you so much. You get well. Back to you guys. Thank you, Joe. Third down and 11 after the loss in the last play. Green, Ooh, third sack. Is that McNeil in there again? No, Spencer Johnson Spencer this time, Johnson. the other tackle, and Reggie Torbor. They ran a little stunt, and both were in there in David Green's lap. This pocket closed quickly. Torbor comes inside with a great move on Dennis Rowland, and Spencer Johnson from his inside tackle spot there to collect the sack. Now that will bring on Gordon Ely Kelso on fourth and 20. And again, Auburn is going to have terrific field position. They have only one man back now. It's Trey Smith. See if they uh, have got the uh, punt block on. They do. Here they come. And they almost got there. Boy, you're not kidding. Donna Young was there. Smith nailed. Great coverage. Mike Gilliam. I mean, first of all, great job by Eli Kelso to get the kick off with Donna Young coming right up on the inside. And then excellent coverage down the field by Mike Gilliam to stop Trey Smith right away. Mm. That's a 52-yard punt, nothing on the return, and that is the end of three. 19-0 will return to Sanford Stadium right after this message and a word from your local station. Vince Dooley, graduating class of 1954, Auburn University. 40 years as a coach and athletic director at the University of Georgia. It will come to an end in June. As Dooley retires at the age of 71, watching the Georgia Bulldogs leading now as we begin the fourth quarter, and Campbell 
tucking it and running, and there is Odell Thurman again. 19 nothing. It was 13 nothing at the half, and I don't think we can say enough of uh, the good stuff about this Georgia defense. Well, I think that's been the story of the game. They have absolutely throttled this Auburn offense. It's not an offense that necessarily has been explosive, but a lot of talent, and they have completely shut them down, and even though Auburn's had some times when they've had good field position, haven't been able to mount anything of substance against this Georgia defense, and coming into the game, number two in the country in total defense right behind Oklahoma, the number one team in the nation. Second down and five. Here's a draw play to Cadillac Williams. He's jammed up by Ken Veal. Well, shutout quarters, three in this game. And uh, that uh, gives them 20 for the season. Oklahoma with 24, LSU with 23. And then Michigan, Ohio State, and the Bulldogs with 20 each. Third and four. And again, Auburn 0 for 9 on third down today. And, and that has been. Georgia's formula, not just today, but all season. Get them in third down and win on third down and get off the field. Three down now, and there's a Pollock jumping a little early, and the pass is complete. That's the first conversion as Cooper uh, Wallace, the tight end, goes all the way to the 35. And they'll, and they'll decline that penalty, and then after the play, it looks like there was a late hit on Kenny Bailey on Ben Obamanu, which would be a dead ball penalty, which should put the ball down closer to the red zone. And for Auburn, their first play of the ball game of over 20 yards. There are two fouls on the play. Offsides against the defense. That penalty is declined. Dead ball, personal foul, late hit against the defense. That penalty is 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. All right. It happened way away from the ball. On the completely the other side of the field, Obamanu and Kenny Bailey. And as is always the case, it's never the first guy who gets it. As you see the forearm to the head, it's always the second guy. I'll and tell you what. Foreman is down. He's down. Down goes Frazier. Frazier. <laughs> Foreman Frazier. Oh, well, what the heck? A little over the down, dude. Obamano has been watching some boxing. What a dive he took. <laughs> and maybe he was in that natatorium with the Georgia football team last week. Uh, uh, man, oh man, what a dive. <laughs> now, again, you know, just late pushing and shoving, some frustration by Obamanu. There's the first one, and that's what upset Bailey, but it's always the second one. What a what a power punch, that left short left jab. You know, we haven't talked much about Obamanu's response to the drop ball last week, but what class he showed. Absolutely. Courage, too. Standing up to the press with the heartbreak of that drop pass on third down. Here is Anthony Mix, number nine, and he is down to the five-yard line. First and goal here as Auburn tries to get on the board. There's a handoff to Cadillac Williams. Struggling over right guard and gets down near the three-yard line as Thomas Davis makes the tackle. You know, it's interesting. All those teams that are kind of jockeying for that number two spot in the BCS, if there's one constant thread between the majority of them, it's great defense. <laughs> Ohio State, great defense. USC, outstanding defense. LSU. Johnson and Williams in the backfield in the eye. Double tight end set, Cadillac Williams to the two-yard line. It'll be third and goal. Williams and Perry. Greg Blue and Tony Taylor get together for the tackle. Taylor and Anderson. Cadillac Williams with 13 rushing touchdowns this season. More than three SEC teams, as you see, Mississippi State, Tennessee, and Vanderbilt. Tennessee may have gotten a couple more today. They had 59 points. So. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Auburn spreads the field on third and goal from the two. Here's Campbell. Tucks it. Throws it deep in the end zone. Looked like last week, didn't it? Here it goes to Odell Thurman. The race is on. Pollock with a block. Odell Thurman. 
still running free. And Odell Thurman gets in for the touchdown. 98 yards. Well, they should give him 100 yards because he tipped the ball. The ball was tipped in the end zone. What a play by the Georgia defense. The ball's tipped by Tony Taylor. Odell Thurman showing the speed. Looks like an old running back. Who almost ran out of gas yeah. at the five. <laughs> 98 yards. Here's Bennett hoping to start a new streak. Earlier against Tennessee, Sean Jones with a 98-yard fumble recovery. One of the biggest plays by the Georgia defense. That equals it. Officially, they're going to give him another yard. They make it 99 yards. Interception return, touchdown, 26 to nothing. That 99-yard interception return for a touchdown, the longest for Georgia since I was a teenager. <laughs> Charlie Britt, 100 yards against Florida. Odell Thurman, 99. Tony Taylor, who's standing by his side, was the linebacker who tipped the ball, and then Thurman ran under it. And Tim Jennings provided a little bit of an escort, but uh, Thurman untouched as he made it all the way. 26 zip. Bennett will kick off. And again, by design, short. Aroma should do on the near side. Out of bounds as he gets up near the 25 and take a look at the touchdown return again. Okay, the guys to watch are these two linebackers here, Tony Taylor and Odell Thurman. Now, they are both going to make a play. Taylor's going to tip it. Thurman is going to intercept it and run for the touchdown. But because there were no backs in the backfield, they could watch the quarterback the whole way. Tony Taylor zeroing in on the quarterback's eyes, gets the tip. And Thurman gets the pick. And it's a pick six. Mm. <laughs> now Mark Perra, the left tackle, was the only one who had any kind of a chance. And Thurman now, to complement that interception return, also has 11 tackles for the day. Officially, they're going to get him 10. And he had 11 last week against Florida, or two weeks ago. This has been as thorough and dominating of a defensive effort as I've seen in a long time. And we talk about Brian Van Gorder a lot, but the other guys on that defensive staff. Illegal procedure against the kicking team. Only three men on the opposite side of the kicker. That is illegal by rule. The penalty would be five yards from the end of the kick. The penalty would be five yards from the kickoff. Re-kick the down. That's John Fabris right there. He does special teams, but he's also one of those defensive coaches, coaches defensive ends. Rodney Gardner is a defensive tackle coach. Willie Martinez is a secondary coach. And when we talked to Brian yesterday, he said, you know, I'm blessed because all of my assistants are great fundamentalists. I mean, they're all sticklers for fundamentals and details. And through the week, our kids really prepare hard. And we pound information into them all week about down and distance, field position, formations. And, uh, well, you can just see that because to be able to have the kind of depth and to not miss a beat defensively the way they've done this year, it can only come from great preparation. Re-kick from the 30. Shadu comes up and grabs it at the 22-yard line. We've got some room over there. Flag is down. There's a scoop. And I bet this one's going to come back. Now they'll mark this off against Auburn. It'll go back to the 27-yard line. 
Let's check the CBS Sportsline stat of the game. Total defense. Auburn today, 177 yards. Get all your complete college football stats at CBSSportsline.com. You mentioned that Georgia right behind Oklahoma in total defense and really not much separating the two schools. Oklahoma only nine fewer yards per game better than this Georgia defense coming into today's ballgame. Ronnie Brown, and this one goes right. And uh, in front of Bruce Thornton, Courtney Taylor makes the grab. But you made the right call right there, in front. Everything has been in front of the Georgia defense today. Nothing has gotten behind them. Nothing has stretched them out of their lanes, out of their zones, out of their fits on the running game. Well, this one close enough to uh, dictate a measurement, so they bring the chain from across the field to see if... Auburn uh, got the first down. Here's the stretch. Short. Couple of inches. Drama. Drama as opposed to click the remote. <laughs> now here are the current SEC standings. Florida and Tennessee both winners today. Georgia with a victory here will keep pace with them and pace means in the loss column. And again, if it, if it winds up a three-way tie, they'll go to the BCS standings. And uh, the team with the highest BCS placement in the East will get the nod unless they're within five placements of each other. Yeah, so yeah. if it ended like this right now, let's just take this scenario. Tennessee would have the higher BCS ranking, but because George is only two spots behind him, they would go to a head-to-head -head between those two teams, and Georgia would win the berth in the SEC championship game because they beat Tennessee. And a 41 to 14 victory there. Here comes the handoff to Ronnie Brown. He comes right. And after the 44 yard line. Well, the remaining schedules come uh, come into play, of course. Key SEC games remaining next weekend. Kentucky is here against Georgia. Vanderbilt will be at Tennessee. And then that uh, significant game in the Western Division, LSU at Ole Miss. We will be there in Oxford next Saturday. And then the Arkansas at LSU game will be televised on CBS on Friday, the 28th of November. You know, the other thing that is important, it doesn't affect Tennessee, but it affects Georgia and Florida. They both have key non-conference games. Florida with a game against Florida State, Georgia with an in-state rival, Georgia Tech. Fumble picked up. And Dexter White, Derek White, has the fumble recovery. And a little confrontation going on with Ronnie Brown and uh, Jarvis Jackson. Well, again, everything in front. The Georgia defense swarms to the football. Thomas Davis knocked the ball out, I think, with his tackle. And Derek White there to scoop it up. Again, when Thomas Davis hits you, you know it. You know that you don't have to get up and look at what number was that truck. It was number 10. There's Thomas Davis from Shelman, Georgia. Todd alluded to the fact they wanted to move him to linebacker this year, but injuries dictated that he go back. Here's a fake reverse and the handoff to Lumpkin coming left and getting spilled. A flag is thrown. Must have been a sale on yellow cloth in this area over the week. <laughs> and uh, let's take a moment and spend it with Jill Arrington. Well, guys, it's not just about football at the University of Georgia. Coach Rick stresses character development to his team. Every week he meets with the seniors to teach them life lessons using the book, The 21 Indispensable Qualities of a Leader. Now, this week's chapter was on being a secure leader he gave examples of margaret thatcher and her perseverance as a leader in a male-dominated society always holding her own not allowing the critics to keep you down and georgia's been through a lot of adversity this year and he's trying to teach his team if you want to be a leader that's what you have to do make it through the adversity to be a true leader and that's what they're doing today guys okay joe you're not kidding uh, th this has been impressive it really has and they still got guys beat up you know they're still playing without some key guys they may get Sean Jones back. They may get Kedrick Golston back even as early as next week on the defensive line. They got Gibson back today, but he hasn't been too big of a factor. Now that last penalty obviously on Georgia, and here's a handoff to Lumpkin to the 43-yard line. 
Lumpkin with the carry. Well, after a bye week, the last two coaching staffs, Georgia 15 and 5. They, uh, they had the bye week. They, they won at home three weeks ago here in a, a nail biter against UAB. 16 yeah. to 13, and that was after they'd struggled against Vandy. Went down and lost to Florida 16 to 13. And then uh, always tough, Todd, I guess, to, to spend a, an off week after a narrow yeah. loss like that. You know, especially to a team that, you know, has had your number. I mean, that, that makes it even tougher when it's a, a key rivalry game like the Florida game for Georgia. Second and 18, and they'll keep it on the ground. Work on the clock a little bit. Again, that you know, gets back to what our Home Depot coach's decision was. What a, what a genius move that was by Mark Rick and his staff to change that thing up and take the kids to the pool because, uh, you know, they've had the off week. They've been practicing. They tried to keep their attention, tried to keep their focus, and he really changed things up. And that one little switch did a great deal for the team's morale. I got a kick out of chatting with him yesterday. He said he he really got nervous about it when they got to the pool. He said maybe nobody's going to jump in. Yeah. You know, maybe they're going to sit there and look at me and think, yeah. well, look when can watch. we get out of here? Go. Right. What is this all about? I guess they loved it, though. Here's Lumpkin again. Had an impressive afternoon. The most impressive run was that 16 yarder for a touchdown on third down. Carlos Dansby makes the tackle. 8.15 to go, 26 to nothing. And a C. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think it's been one real positive for Georgia also offensively. It's not been a, a powerful offensive day, but I think they got a solid game out of their freshman center, Nick Jones. I mean, he held his own in there. Those are two senior defensive tackles that he's going up against with Auburn. Spencer Johnson and DeMarco McNeil and uh, true freshman making his first start in there because of injuries at the guard position. And he's held up very well. There's number 70, Nick Jones, fourth and nine now. And they're going to let the clock wind down and call time with seven minutes and 39 seconds to go. 26 nothing, Georgia leads. Ball on the 33, fourth and nine. High snap, Nick Jones. This time Green controls it, goes down, the ball will go over on downs. Did somebody tell Nick Jones during that timeout I just said something nice about I think him. so, yeah. <laughs> Nick Jones comes over, bad snap. And let's go down to Jill Arrington. Auburn, Georgia, the Deep South's oldest rivalry in 1996. Georgia prevailed in the SEC's first ever overtime game. In 2000, Auburn won in overtime. In 2001, the Dogs stopped inches short of victory at the goal line as time expired. Then last year, Michael Johnson with the catch propelled the Dogs to win their first SEC title in 22 years. All right, thank you, Jill. Ball in the 40 on downs. Jason Campbell with Cadillac Williams in the backfield. Here comes the blitz from the corner, Danny Verdun Wheeler, and that one goes deep, and it's caught by Anthony Mix. Did a nice job of hanging in yeah. as he took a couple of pops, one the, from Greg Blue, and he's down. Well, two guys hit him. First, Tim Jennings hit him, but he's 5'8", 164. Then Greg Blue hit him, and he's 6'2", 200. And that one hurt a lot worse. Oh, did it ever. Looked like it was up close to the chin area, actually. Hmm. Heck of a job by Mix just hanging on to the football. Sure though. was. And the medical staff out quickly. This Auburn football team, uh, you talked about it earlier, started out the year with so much promise, so much expectation. Six and four coming into today. Probably going to leave here six and five. Losing three of their last four games. All of their hopes, all their dreams, all their aspirations gone except one. And that is to, there's no national championship, no SEC championship, but they still can win the state championship. And that's, that's their last game against Alabama next week. Well, Anthony Mix, the subject of uh, care and attention now from the medical staff. It kind of looked to me like Greg Blue's helmet caught him under the chin and might have just knocked him a little woozy there. 
Well, while time has been taken, we'll step away. We'll be right back. All right, Tim, Anthony Mix walking uh, with some assistance, but walking off the field. Yeah. Tim was talking about some of those highlights. How about Tennessee? You know, they, they mm -hmm. went down and beat Miami 10 6 last week, only had 170 yards of offense. Today they explode for 59 points against Mississippi State. Justin Fetzko in now as Mix is out. Here's Campbell back to throw on first down, being chased and lets it go. Incomplete. Marcus Jackson, number 44, was there to make the talk, make the uh, pressure. Second and ten. Now we've talked about the accomplishment of this Georgia team. How about uh, the kind of season that is winding down uh, for Auburn? Yeah. One five in a row to recover, and we thought uh, right back in the thick of things they got hammered at LSU, 31 to seven. Then won a meaningless game against Louisiana Monroe, 73 to seven. But lost the heartbreaker last week to Ole Miss and are getting thumped soundly today. Time called. Time now for the Fidelity Investment Scoring Recap. Billy Bennett on to offer a couple of field goals in the early going. One from 47, the other from in close. This was only 18 yards. Made it a 6 0 game. And then uh, in the second quarter, David Green, Michael Johnson hooked up again. 13 0 at the half. On a third down and 16 in the third quarter, Greg Lumpkin dived in for the touchdown. And Odell Thurman, off the tip from Tony Taylor, went 99 yards for the interception return for a touchdown. And that uh, puts us where we stand at 26 to nothing. And a reminder, next week we all head to Oxford. In the Deep South, LSU visits Ole Miss. That game will be televised at 3.30 Eastern time on CBS. And there are three things that I cannot wait for next week. Stroll through the Grove, catfish at the Taylor Grocery, and hearing the Ole Miss band play their version of Dixie. I love it. <laughs> all three of them. Uh, well, I get to be with you to, to enjoy it all. Marcus Jackson, number 44, with the defensive play there. LSU, of course, has a game at Alabama tonight. Uh, Ole Miss 6 and 0 with a bye week, well deserved week off. 8 and 2 overall, and uh, Auburn with a loss today will fall to 6 and 5. Now Georgia defending Auburn's third down and eight play with Jason Campbell as the quarterback. Campbell off the back foot finds his tight end Cooper Wallace to the 20 that'll be enough for a first down you know when I was at the facility this week at Georgia and I was in the locker room at one point and there were a lot of signs around and the signs were saying defend your turf defend your turf obviously they wanted to reverse that trend of losing at home to Auburn in this series but one of the things that Mark Rick was stressing to his team a little Georgia football history they've had 11 SEC championship teams at Georgia and only one of those teams ever lost a home game it was back in 19 48 they lost to North Carolina 21 to 14 they didn't want to lose another home game this year first down and 10 well this is going to be their 13th win in succession here's Thomas Davis chasing Cadillac Wiggins boy you just saw Anthony Mix walk into the locker room let's check in with Jill well the staff has only given me that he got his belt wrong although I did see them checking out his left ankle and they have taken him into the locker room I'll see if I can find out anything else guys okay Look like it might be a concussion. Five minutes, 38 seconds to go. An Auburn team touted as number one by the Sporting News and the New York Times back in August. About to fall to six and five. And the last shutout in the series in 76. That one was actually at Jordan Hare at Auburn. Here's a Ronnie Brown out of the backfield down to the 11-yard line. Now, the Heisman hopefuls, how about today's action? Well, Eli Manning's off this week. He's played very well. Jason White, his team winning big again. The, the one thing I think that's going to hurt Jason White is just that their team keeps winning by so many points. The average margin for victory over 35 points this year for Oklahoma. Larry Fitzgerald 
The thing that hurts him potentially is he's a sophomore, but what a dynamic football player. And Chris Perry of Michigan keeps rolling along. And, of course, Eli Manning right in the, in the thick of the things with the nationally televised showdown yeah. against LSU next week. First and goal as Campbell picks up the first down under five to play. It's been a great year for the Heisman because you know, none, none of the guys are talking about it. None of the schools have been doing a lot of pushing. It's been a fun season to watch, and, and these guys have played themselves into contention throughout the course of the year. It's, it's been the way I think the Heisman Trophy should be uh, awarded and conducted through the year. Now here's Campbell back. Fires it left side. Justin Fetzko knocked down by Tim Jennings at the five-yard line. You know, I, I, I was thinking about David Green. We chatted with him and David Pollock yesterday. And David Green said, yeah, what do you think? I kind of like Eli. Yeah. And, and David Green himself was mentioned as a candidate That's right. before the loss down at, uh, at LSU. David Green, who will be back for his senior season next year. It was interesting because when Maurice Claret didn't play this year for Ohio State, it took out the main guy that everybody would have been pointing to saying, this guy has the best chance to win. And when that happened, it just opened up everything for everybody else. Brown stuffed. Odell Thurman. And I'll guarantee you this Georgia defense is thrilled with the way they've played, but they want the shutout. Defenses love shutouts. That's why all the starters are still in the game for the Georgia defense. Odell Thurman has been the leading tackler today. He has an interception return for a touchdown of 99 yards. And he has been a real force in the middle with 12 tackles today. Third and goal. Look at Brian. He's still coaching. They want the shutout. As do the fans in the end zone. Three wideouts. Campbell looks at McIntyre, not there, goes for it, got it, touchdown. Well, nice effort by Jason Campbell. He was able to break a tackle. I didn't think he was going to get in, but he was able to break a tackle right at about the three-yard line. Good decision to run inside of David Pollock, and then right here he makes a tackle, and that was Thomas Davis, who does not hit, miss many tackles. He ran right by Jason Campbell, and Campbell slipped into the end zone. A six-yard run for the touchdown. And this is going to be John Vaughn, number 37, for the extra point. And he just does cut it inside the right upright. Campbell, four seats from six. The extra point makes it 26-7. 26-7, Philip Yost will kick off for the Auburn Tigers. And uh, Georgia was expecting or was ready for the onside kick. It didn't come, and Tyson Browning, the low man back, avoids a couple of tacklers, comes down the sideline, and uh, is out to the 32. Boy, are we looking forward to this. It is time now for the Wrangler play of the game, presented by Wrangler Five Star Premium Denim. Here is the inimitable Larry Munson of the Georgia Radio Broadcasting Campbell, Network. 22 and a half yards to get their first point. Snap. Campbell back, looking, looking. Now he's going to throw. We bat it up, and he inter and we intercept it. We got a guy running down on the far side, a linebacker. It's Odell Thurman long down the far side. Odell Thurman, they're a foot race. He needs a block. He got enough of a block to score. Ah, uh, Larry Munson. Here's Joe Tarasinski and Ronnie Powell. As uh, Ronnie Powell gets uh, some action for the first time since early in the season and our player of the game goes to the young man who ran that uh, interception back 99 yards Odell Thurman 12 tackles and two sacks along with the interception marvelous game he really did have a great game and with two minutes and 42 seconds left in the ball game uh, I knew you wouldn't let me down you know every week you give me a new vocabulary word so you have to give me a definition for in indemnable <laughs> inimitable in whatever <laughs> what does that mean <laughs> means it's been around for a long okay. time no it means kind of unique uh, well no you can't be kind of unique can you you're either unique or you're not <laughs> here's Powell left side Second and one, 26 to 7. Joe Tarashinsky, part of a legendary family here at Ole Miss. He's the third 
Tarashinsky to play. His granddad, Joe, was a, a part of the teams in the 40s. Took one year off to serve in the military during the war. And his father is a director of video, played here in the in the 70s. Joe the third on the left, Joe Jr. part of the staff, and Joe Sr. 1942, and then again after the war in 45 and 46. And Joe Jr. is my guy. You know, I know all the film guys in the SEC. When I come on to campus, those are my hookup guys for my uh, film study on Thursday and Friday. T.J. Jackson, the injured player, time called. Copy. Oh my gosh. 26-7 with 2.06 to go in this one. Georgia is going to keep pace with Tennessee and Florida. T.J. Jackson, the injured Auburn Tiger, heading to the sidelines. You know, when, when Timmy Brando was talking about that Purdue-Ohio State game and how uh, an Ohio State loss would help USC, the other team that would be very much helped by that would be LSU. LSU right now number four in the BCS poll. And should USC slip up somewhere along the line, uh, LSU would be in a in a nice position so that uh, so that we don't get calls from uh, English teachers <laughs> around the country as you look at the bowl championship series the current Versus rankings 10. Tennessee seven and Michigan eight inimitable incapable of being imitated or copied yeah. that's beautiful well I'm glad See, I, I, I travel with the rule book for college football and you travel with a pocket <laughs> dictionary. I love it. I loved it last week when we both looked up maladroit. <laughs> maladroit. You know what the definition is? Here's the head off to the fullback. Maladroit. The absence of adroitness. <laughs> that was very helpful. Oh, I, I felt kind of awkward after I read that. Yeah. Okay, Tim, thank you. Second down and four here. Tarashinsky hands it off. And uh, the highlight uh, group of this day, Brian Van Gordon's punch on defense, Todd. Yeah, they, they, they have been the key. I mean, they have dominated, stifled everything. They dominated on third down. They were never out of position. They never gave up any big plays other than, I think, one play of over 20 yards. And again, just the speed, how well coached they are, how disciplined they are, and the fact that without five starters in the game today could put up that kind of a dominating performance. Third and two. Could be the final play. Bonnie Powell is the deep back. Gets the handoff and uh, that will be short of the first down. This one goes in the books as a Georgia win. And the Auburn Tigers fall to six wins and five defeats for the year. Georgia, eight wins and two defeats. And significantly, they keep pace with Florida and Tennessee. 26-7 the final tonight. 48 Hours Investigates, followed by Hack and the District. We are looking forward to seeing you next week from Oxford, Mississippi. For Todd Blackledge and Jill Erickson, I'm Vern Lundquist. Good night from Athens.